That bass right there. A deeper one there. Ooh. Let's go. Welcome back to Wave React. Last week we listened to Midnight by Taylor Swift. And we're going to keep that party going by listening to the Till Dawn edition. Yep. Ten more bonus songs. Yep. So this was my favorite album. Let's see. Here we go. This is The Great War. Mm. So a lot of these bonus tracks have Aaron on production, who nice. worked on Folklore and Evermore with her. Love Aaron. Love the national. That synth is tape. Super cool. The way it's building is really cool. Mm-hmm. It almost sounds like she wrote this in between albums. It's kind of got elements of Midnight's and then Evermore a little bit yeah. too. Yeah, I'd say Aaron probably plays a part. It's in cool. That. I yeah. dig it. I kind of hear it in the vocals. Ooh. I like that synth is following the melody of the lyrics. Me too. I like the main chords because it sounds like a toy piano that's like really affected though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear that. I love the toms, the drums. What a cool bridge, if that's what that was, because that's what it felt yeah. like. Queen of bridges here. That was, yeah. Love that. I love the war vibes. Yeah. Great Matches war. Matches the theme, for sure. World War One. Drums are so cool. Really interesting song. Talking about the war, I wonder what she's relating it to. What the great war was in her situation. Was it a right a breakup, a relationship? Um, yeah, interesting. That's what I would assume. But I love that. I mean, she keeps it vague for, mm -hmm. so more people can relate to it. And, and I way. liked the war vibes, like the yeah. marching snare drums and stuff during the bridge. That was cool. Yeah. Definitely I, felt different than the album uh, yeah. in a really cool way. Yeah. I mean, like you were saying, I could definitely hear this on Evermore. Yeah. She captures me in a way that no other artist does when it comes to like, I'm a person that hears the music before anything else. But right. with Taylor Swift, it's just all the vocals and the lyrics and everything like that. Her tone was deeper and just mm -hmm. a little more like how it was on Evermore. And that's where it, it kind of stood out to me. This next one's one of my favorites. It's a little more country leaning. It's called Bigger Than the Whole Sky. No words appear before mm. me in the aftermath. Synth. Yeah, it's got that ambient vibe. Mm. Every single thing I touch becomes sick with sadness. 
Jeez. My heart's getting heavy. Don't make me cry, Taylor. Don't do it. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. You were bigger than the whole sky. You were more than just a short time. Hmm. Jack, the producer on this one. Bird flap its wings over in Asia. Take that as like the butterfly effect. Yeah. Did some force take you because I didn't pray? It's almost like you're so scared of losing something that you are almost irrational about what changed. Yeah. But in this, she talks about like never even knowing the person, so it's really interesting. interesting. That's some like midnights right there, yeah. totally. What a cool line. You were bigger than the whole sky. I'm gonna I go love tell it. my partner that tonight. just because of the build up. Hey babe. <laughs> I love you. You're bigger than the whole sky. This is cool, man. That guitar. Subtle country. Right. Very subtle. Yeah, they like listed as ambient country or an country yeah, infused ambient it's which very, is interesting it's very ambient yeah. something I never would think to mix hmm man I never get hit deep in the feels on the second song but whoo I mean it's the bonus but yeah <laughs> you just mean on the channel yeah that beginning with just that synth and so warm and emotional oh my yeah. gosh What did she mean by the birds flap the wings in Asia? Kind of like the butterfly flap. Okay, She's okay. like, what happened? Maybe something did that and gotcha. changed the course. So she had like this destiny in their head and yeah. then something changed and threw that off and it, you're kind of going through the whys yeah. sort of. Gotcha. Okay. That's how we take it. Makes Let sense. us know if we're totally wrong. <laughs> I just, yeah, I love that line bigger than the whole sky yeah, when she went into that. Me like, too. She's just so good at expressing her love, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, and anger. Yeah, just all the emotions, really. Yeah. <laughs> Next one's Paris. Just okay. a little more upbeat pop. I've been there. Dang. Jealous. Ooh. Okay. Up with ages ago, so wanna be Z-lister. Wanna be Z-lister. That's the list we're on. <laughs> I think that's the theremin. Hmm? There's a theremin in this. I think it's that high-pitched. Warm synth in the back. Super quiet. Mm. Listen for the theremin. That part. There it is. You hear that really high okay, pitch thing? Yeah. Can y'all hear that? It's way deep back there.
That vocal effect is super cool. Mm -hmm. Like the glitch. That's tight. Midnight, folks. So is this in her head too? Is this a what if? I think it's, I mean, the what ifs aren't, I think it was more, you know, it could be memories. Interesting. Not just what ifs. I just wonder because she says yeah. like, in my mind, we drew a map on your bedroom ceiling, you know? So I wonder if it's just playing out in her head again. Mm, yeah. I see what you're saying. Her imaginary lover, sort of. That's a good point. I don't know if these all follow the same concept. I'm just all about the that. concepts, guys. Yeah. I'm down the rabbit hole. Been here for weeks. Got a whole board in there connecting all the... I found all the clues. Paris is a cool city. That was a cool song. Yeah. It was a little more upbeat. I could see this being on her Lover album. Hmm. Let me know. He hasn't heard that yet. I have One day, we will. That was very different in terms of the production. That's what I mean. Jack is just, I, we, and we always say Jack when we talk about producer. Obviously, we know Taylor is a huge producer, huge part. This is her vision. Right. But like when, when we talk about the music arrangement and stuff like that, mainly it's Jack who produces plays a, a lot, lot of, of that stuff. And plays a lot of Pro, it, yeah, too. Plays yeah. a lot of it. Programs it, you know, makes the beats is a good way to think about it, yeah. I guess. Man, he's just so versatile, though. It's right. insane just how... Especially Much listening of to he covers. his stuff outside Taylor with oh, Lana and yeah, 1975 I mean, it's, and Bleachers. And then not only that, but I think why we stand him so hard is because he can be so different, but then he'll bring in little Easter eggs from his other stuff. Yeah. I'll hear little things from like the 1975's album that he'll throw in like to, there's a, did you know there's a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard? Right. And to have somebody as big as Taylor Swift just like be willing to go all in right. with it. I mean, they're great really team. Awesome. Hey, right. Anyways. On to this next one. High Fidelity. Back to Aaron on this. Okay. Love the production. Lock broken, slur spoken, wound open, game token. I didn't know you were keeping count. Rain soaking, blind hoping, you said I was freeloading, I didn't know you were keeping count. Love those lines. High infidelity, put on your records and regret me, I bent the truth too far tonight, I was dancing around, dancing around it. Love those pulses. It's totally Aaron and like Justin Vernon. Totally. I really like the dichotomy of the bleeps with that mm -hmm. really emotional piano. The yeah. tone is really good. It's an interesting uh, organic and electronic. Yeah, I like that. It's a good point. Multiple vocal layers. Mm -hmm. That really high one. Yep. I was here another two. Yep. You know, there's many different ways that you can kill the one you love. Acoustic. It's an interesting play on words. High infidelity. Yep. Yeah, that acoustic's cool. I don't know. It seems like you really want to tell us. Where were you? <laughs> Put on my detective badge. Hmm. <laughs> so what's interesting about this to me is high infidelity you know infidelity cheating yeah. high fidelity great sound right and she keeps talking about records put them on and regret meeting me and like most records are high fidelity that's how they're sold yeah yeah she's a mastermind yeah so good catch there he's being blacked out by the records the person's putting on the music and just forgetting about her yeah getting lost and 
Ooh, Taylor. Do you hear Aaron sing with her at all? He sings. So on Evermore, they have a song. Well, I, I mean, on these oh. songs. Mm. No. He's just on no. the production side. Yeah. Bummer. Really cool. Yeah. I really like those drums. That was an interesting... I went, like, what were they pounding on? You know? Yeah. No clue. Crazy. Like I said, the mixture of the synthetic and like the organic there mm-hmm. was so interesting. I mean, you got the bleepy bloops, the synthiest of synth. Yeah. And then this really beautiful grand piano, these drums that kind of sound like you're beating on a, a guitar case and then some other random acoustic stuff. acoustic guitar in there. And then Taylor just doing her run, sounding like a queen. This next one is Glitch. Whoa. Yeah. Static. Depending on what kind of mood and situation ship I'm in. I love vocal there. I love this. Hmm. Yeah, it's got a good bounce. I think there's been a glitch. Hate glitches. Oh, on the left ear there. Whoa, so cool. This one's all over the place. I think it's Sam Dew. You guys are going to get mad that we're talking so much, sorry. Don't be mad. Hmm. You know what rhymes is glitch? I'm afraid to say. Stitch. Oh, okay. Pitch. I have a fix. Kind of like a stitch. That guitar was nice. He's still talking on the song over here. Sorry. He apologized and then just kept doing it. Sorry, guys. I like to imagine that Tira's like, I got this song called Glitch and came to Jack and he's like... <laughs> I think it's the other way around. I can, make, I can make it glitchy. I think it's the other way around. Jack's like, listen to this crazy stuff <laughs> that then, I made last night. So then she wrote it about it. After I him. ate too much ice cream. <laughs> and yeah. she's like, that's crazy. And then she stacks 40 vocals on it. He pans it all weird. Boom. Yeah, I could be wrong, but yeah, I think that vocal I was talking about is Sam Do because he has credited as background vocals. Yeah, but and apparently I see Zoe, Zoe Kravitz is super too. cool. Yeah, shout out Zoe. Unless the Wikipedia is wrong, that's, is that still a thing? Never trust Wikipedia. <laughs> well, the problem is there's multiple track lists and it lists 18 as being yeah. so many cool things going on there. I, honestly, so far, I still think my favorite is track two, bro. That was just oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah, bigger than the whole sky. Yeah, yeah that's, that's awesome. Top. Dear reader, though, it's coming up. That's my that's that's my baby there. All right, would have, could have, should have. Love that guitar. The product, <clears throat> the production sounds so different than Midnight's on a lot of these. Yeah, that's why they're still dawn. Drums are tight. Hmm. 
I really like this one. If she didn't have the chorus sort of built like that, I would almost say this doesn't sound like a Taylor Swift song. In a good way. Yeah. It's like very indie. I don't know. Mm. And she does a good bridge, and it sounds like yeah. Taylor Swift. What an architect building bridges over here. Scooter. Love that line. Scooter. This one's my favorite, for sure. Man. To me, that almost felt like someone died or that she put them to rest. It almost feels like I can't get rid of this person, but this person's gone and I want to sign that they're okay. Can't, I don't know. It could be that. But I also think it's that maybe she was hurt so much by this person that she can't not think about that person. Like she can't, like she'd love to forget that part. But she, she can't says, forget I it all the way. Like I she regret can't you close all the, time. the team to, uh, yeah. tomb. She can't close the tomb yeah. all the way. But it she could can't be like fully saying, let it go. Yeah. Some people say this is a like sister song to Dear John, which is about yeah John Mayer. I don't think I've heard that one though. That'll be an interesting two two weeks later. If you don't know what that is, you should yep. subscribe because we're going to go back and talk, go more in, in depth with some of this stuff. But yeah, I found that interesting just because so much imagery about like, I didn't catch till halfway through the song, but like a cemetery almost. Yep. And it's got a very sad vibe to it. Oh, totally. Something is haunting her. Or she's trying to get rid of, I, I don't know. The part that, that gets me is whenever she says, like, you took away my girlhood. I know. Me too. That was powerful. All right. This next one, if you liked... Midnight Rain with all the vocal effects. I think you'll like this next one. Dear Reader. Builds up to it, though. Dear Reader. Love the message in this next one. Dear Reader, if it feels like a trap, hmm. you're already in one. Love that. So many good lines in this. that attitude on it mm-hmm So many cool elements. Ugh. Do you read it when you aim at the devil? Make sure you don't miss. Higher harmony there. Yeah. Ooh. Never take advice from someone who's falling apart. Never that bass right there. A deeper one there. Ooh. Let's go.
Love it. <laughs> oh. Sick. I love it because she's really honest in this, basically saying, you know, I write these songs, you guys want advice from me, you guys want me to be this guiding light, but I'm messed up too. I'm like human. you you shouldn't listen to me because right. I'm not perfect by any means. So yeah. I love that honesty and just the way she portrays it. I did not pick that up at the time, but now that you say that I love it because yeah, so many of those lines is like advice columns. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where people would write in questions or whatever. That's what I always find so interesting about art is I think at least in my experience with it like art is sort of expression in a way that can be shared and most artists are deeply f flawed so yeah. they're, you know right. it's not like someone to you're not a role model like exactly anybody that has a perfect life wouldn't write songs that would relate make songs. to people. right i mean that's the uh, you know honest truth but no i get it i mean you know th that's got to be tons so much pressure so many people look up to you and stuff and right we're all human. We all make mistakes. So yeah, I love that. Love the honesty and just oh the production. Yeah, the auto tune loved, usage. Yeah, the, so the cool. Pitching and it was, of it. The auto tune was so cool because she had it when she says who's falling apart, right, almost like was, a machine right. breaking or something. Glad you got that. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, that's one of my favorite talking the whole album too. Yeah, yeah, mm. that, that was really good. Awesome. So next one, we're gonna go a little country pop. Okay. Love love the vibes of this one. Hits different. All right. I washed my hands of ice at the club. You made a mess of me. I pictured you with other girls in love and threw up on the street. <laughs> Love the vibe. Yeah. This is like summer, windows down. Mm hmm. Long hair, don't care. <laughs> yep. Shout out Ken. Shout out Ken. Get that energy. <laughs> You're such dorks. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> this is a total like if I had a convertible cruising yeah. in a convertible. Oh boy. What I thought was interesting about this is Jack, Aaron, and Taylor produced it. So, oh, cool. There's only a few of those, and I think Evermore and Folklore, where they have all three work together. That's awesome. gotta be hard to sing live remember argumentative antithetical dream girl. yeah tongue twister This 
would have been perfect on red. I was gonna say, doesn't sound like modern Taylor. Yeah, sounds like her transition phase in mm-hmm. country pop. So that was That's, cool. Yeah, but I, I dig that. I think it's also a fan favorite because it's kind of throwback sound a little bit. Because it hits just, different. Yeah, and it hits different. <laughs> Boom, Bradford. All right, we heard this song with less Lana. Now we're going to hear more Lana. Okay. Here we go. Snow on the beach. Their harmonies are so amazing. Yeah. You can hear their voices are more distinct on this version. Yeah. Before they were more blended. And here it's just Lana right now. Yeah. Hmm. There's, there's my babe. Awesome. Mm. I love Lana Del Rey so much. They sound so good. <laughs> Jack was like, it's not over. <laughs> Keep it going. Stay in that booth. <laughs> no. Mm, beautiful. Beautiful. More Kinda Lana. wish that one would have made the uh Right. The album. It's a really interesting lie. choice. I wonder if she's just teasing us along. She's like, Oh, I know people are gonna want more. <laughs> So if I just give them a little taste, then once the deluxe comes out, they're going to be like, oh, I need it. I really love the original because of the blending, but I liked how Lana stood out more on that. Yeah, her voice is so distinctive and classic sounding. All right, now we're on to the final track, which is Karma. Again, we heard this, but we haven't heard it with Ice Spice. I've I've actually never heard Ice Spice before. I've never listened to her music. No, here we go. Oh, here we go. Karma is that girl, like... There's like vintage sounding wine on the synth. Mm-hmm. Tape bend. Them drums. Hitting. Mm, dope. 
Yeah. Nice verse. You can hear her harmonizing a little bit too. That's how I flex. Pretty flexible. Yeah, me too. Love that three line. Band in the right ear. Karma is the guy from the Chiefs. You're my bestie. Yeah, man. Appreciate that. I have another bestie, but yeah. That was super cool. Yeah. I really dug Ice Spice's verse. Yeah, cool verse. I liked her harmonizing with a few lines there, and then they did that little back and forth, which is a nice added bonus. That was really cool, man. Uh, yeah. I really dug the just, you know, taking those extra songs and making it into a whole nother side um until dawn like what a cool name right i didn't even tell you so there was okay so how the release will happen this releases at midnight you're like oh sweet but then being taylor she's like hey what if we drop something at 3 a.m too i think i remember that so that's the 3 a.m edition which had the bulk of these songs and then she's like hey what about the till dawn we're just gonna take it all (laughs) night long really cool i love a lot of those but again dear readers like pew like Dear Reader sonically could have fit really well on totally. Midnight for sure of that bunch. I'll have to digest that a little bit more before I decide on my favorite right. favorite songs for sure. It definitely wasn't as cohesive, obviously, as the other release, but that was really cool. I'm yeah. glad that we split it up and uh, was able to take that in as its own thing for, for sure. sure. Yep. But uh, yeah, that was awesome, man. And you got some time because in two weeks... Brand new Taylor... Yeah. Well, that, but I'm also saying we're going to do two weeks later where we discuss this album. We're going to discuss this album, too. (laughs) We're going to discuss the whole album. The entire thing. Pick our favorite songs. Have a little after discussion. March Madness for basketball. April Madness for Taylor Swift. (laughs) So be sure to sub up. Let us know what you want to see from us next. Yeah. Check out some of our other videos. We cover all kinds of different genres from Taylor Swift. The sleep token to the weekend to all kinds of stuff. We love music. We'll listen to anything, basically. Appreciate y'all, and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace. Later. Do you?